Welcome to the Fresh Princess channel where we learn, fail, and learn some more. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the Grow Tent. I am so excited you all are here. Today we're going to be talking about all things Grow Towers, but before we get into it, please don't forget to support my channel and like, share, and subscribe. I get asked a lot of questions about my Grow Tower, so today we are going to take a deeper dive into the Grow Tower. We are going to talk about all of its components, the assembly, how it works, and most importantly, what you can grow in it. All right, let's get into it and talk some towers, shall we? These are the grow towers in my grow tent. I've got three colors. We've got orange, green, and yellow because who doesn't love some color in their indoor garden? I have named this one Orangina, this one is called Bumblebee, and the green one is called Gumby. This is the only grow tower that currently has actual food growing in it. I started it up about three weeks ago, and as you can see, we've already got some lettuce, some herbs, and we've got some strawberries growing. Once they get mature enough, we are going to propagate and fill up the other two towers. Let's go through the basic components of the tower, starting from the bottom up. The tower rests on a base that has six wheels. One of my favorite components of these grow towers is that they do come on wheels, making it super easy to move them around your space, whether you're growing indoors or outdoors. The reservoir sits on the base and fits 16 liters of water. The towers come with a total of 10 layers and each layer has eight plant ports. One of these grow towers can grow up to 80 plants. The towers come with 80 of these net pots. They are one inch in size and perfect for most plants. One of the benefits of vertical gardening is that you save a lot of space. One of these towers takes up 16 square feet. The tower walls are comprised of 80 of these components that snap together to make 10 layers. Eight of these connect together to create one layer. Now we slide in the little components where the roots rest. One goes in every plant port. The tower comes equipped with a regular brushless pump, which sits in the reservoir of the tower. The little space to pull the power cable through. Now for the guts of the tower. There's a hose connecting the pump to the irrigation pipe. The irrigation pipe feeds the water through the inner walls of the tower, allowing for the roots to get ample water nutrients, and oxygen. Sounds like a recipe for success to me. Every tower is equipped with six full spectrum LED light bars. These do a fantastic job at providing light for the plants and they're super easy to install. A star-shaped metal frame gets screwed to the lid of the tower, then each light bar can hang from the frame. Once the lights are installed, it is quite easy to connect to power. There is one power cord with six cables that connect to each light bar. If you plan on using this tower outdoors, you don't need the lights. They hook on and off quite easily and the frame is an option. They also come with a bracket in the center to keep the lights from swinging around. As previously mentioned, each plant port has a little scoop that houses a bit of water where the roots can sit. Some use a timer, but I let my tower run all day. In terms of grow medium, I like to use clay pebbles. Although they leave a bit of debris in your system, they work very effectively because they retain a lot of moisture. I've also recently been experimenting with foam collars to see how well my plants will do. There are some different grow mediums out there, but when it comes to aeroponics, clay pebbles are usually the most commonly used. Here's some footage of me taking the tower apart for cleaning purposes. My grows usually last about six months, at which point I take the tower apart to give it a good scrub. I usually just take apart the layers, bring them to my utility sink, and wash away. It's not required, but I typically sanitize and sterilize my towers between every grow. I have found that in terms of cleanliness, this is the best practice. Putting it back together is the easiest part. Don't forget to put the pump first. I've taken these towers apart so many times and put them back together. I am getting so much faster. When it comes to nutrients, I've been using the General Hydroponics Flora Nova line, which has been working really well for me so far, but 
but you can use any fertilizer in these towers. General Hydroponics is what I've started with and it hasn't let me down so far. I currently use the Flora Nova series along with a bit of Cali Magic. Depending on your application, I also like to include a bit of H2O2. This allows for more oxygen for the roots. I typically add in my calcium first and let it run in the system for 30 minutes before adding in any other nutrients. The tower can either be filled through a plant port or through the top of the tower. A question I get often is, what kind of stuff can you grow in these towers? The good news is you can grow just about anything in these grow towers. The possibilities are endless from leafy greens, salad varieties, to different kinds of herbs. I've even tried growing zinnia flowers in there, which I killed in a very short amount of time, but we will try again. Strawberries do really well in aeroponics. The possibilities are honestly endless, guys. If you have trellis support, then you can grow even more smaller tomato varieties, pepper varieties, maybe even a small watermelon. Over the course of the next little while, I am going to be exploring all the different things that can be grown in these grow towers, and I'm taking you on the journey with me. The great thing about these towers is that there is no green thumb needed. In just a couple months, you get beautiful, thriving, large, flavorful plants, and there is nothing like a fresh, crunchy salad that you harvested yourself. I've tried different watering schedules, but the method I found the most effective is to set it and forget it. I just let that water run all day long and my plants thank me for it. Depending on the growth stage, I typically need to fill the reservoir one to two times a week. And if you've never grown aeroponically, you are in for a treat. The size of your leaves will be exponentially larger than traditional gardening. You also end up saving a lot on water, land, and nutrients because the plants only take what they need. You can either fill all the plant ports or just a few. It really depends on what you're growing. The larger the plants are, I typically space them out more. The goal is to encourage air circulation amongst the leaves. I have grown so many different salad varieties and herb varieties in these towers and everything I grow is non-GMO and organic. I am really passionate about eating clean and healthy food and as time goes on, it seems harder and harder to achieve. Everything at the grocery store is either heavily sprayed, overly priced or poor quality. That's why I am so grateful for these towers. Can you imagine having fresh herbs, leafy greens, and strawberries that are organic for the rest of your life? And don't even get me started on the flavor of aeroponically grown food. It is truly so much far superior than anything from the grocery store. In the upcoming weeks, I'm going to take you through the seed starting process and how things get transferred and begin to grow in the grow tower. Depending on what you're growing, the seed to harvest is usually approximately three months. If there is something specific you're interested in seeing grow in the tower, drop it in the comments. I will procure the seeds and we are going to experiment. My favorite thing that I've grown successfully in the tower so far is romaine lettuce and dinosaur kale. Herbs grow like crazy in the towers and when I have an abundance, I harvest, dry them and grind them into a seasoning. Homegrown food and homegrown seasoning? That's pretty cool.
that sums it up for the Grow Towers. I am really looking forward to showing you guys everything they are capable of. And for more information, please check out my website, thefreshprincess.ca. And again, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, 